Bernie Sanders is probably the only politician in the history of American politics who can become embroiled in controversy while doing literally nothing. Because over the weekend, a clip from the Joe Rogan Experience podcast blew up, and Bernie Sanders was blamed for this. Why? Well, you'll find out. Because Joe Rogan is voting for Donald Trump over Joe Biden. And since Bernie Sanders once shared Joe Rogan saying nice things about Bernie Sanders, Bernie Sanders is the one who we should all be uh, lambasting currently, according to Democratic Party loyalists. So this is the clip that is controversial. Issue with the Democratic Party. They've essentially made us all morons. Yeah. With this Joe Biden thing. They really have. <laughs> they made imagine? us all morons. Who do we need? I mean, can, uh, I None can't of, vote for that guy. I can't vote for him. I can't vote for him. I can't vote for Trump. There, I would, I'd rather vote for Trump than him. I, I don't think he could handle anything. I mean, you're relying entirely on his cabinet. Like, if you want to talk about a, an individual leader that can communicate, he can't do that. And, and we don't even know what the fuck he's going to be like after a year in office. The pressure of being the president of the United States right. is something that no one has ever prepared for. Right. The only one who seems to be fine with it is Trump, oddly enough. I mean, he doesn't seem to be aging at all or in any sort of decline. You know, Obama, like, almost immediately started looking older. Yeah. George W. almost immediately started well, looking older. Well, I think older. that this is not a change in Trump. You know, it's interesting to me because as I watched this, it became apparent to me that Joe Rogan, theoretically, is the exact type of person who the Democratic Party tells us that they should be winning over. Someone who is ideologically positioned between the Democratic Party and the Republican Party party right you want to win over those voters who kind of opt for republicans sometimes and democrats other times it's not about making sure that the left is satisfied and has someone to vote for it's not about bringing out non-voters people like joe rogan that's who the democratic party told us we have to be winning over which is why they have to remain so centrist and right wing on a lot of issues but yet when he says you know what based on this issue of mental fitness i'm gonna go with donald trump they blame Bernie Sanders. Why? Because he once elevated Joe Rogan's endorsement. Now, people like Joe Rogan, like, I, I don't watch the podcast. I'm not a fan of Joe Rogan, so I don't necessarily know about him. But what I do know about him is that he's very similar to the average voter, right? He has some reactionary right-wing views when it comes to social issues, but here and there, he's relatively progressive when it comes to single-payer healthcare, for example. So he's kind of ideologically all over the place, but I think he's gettable if you provide him with the correct candidate. And Bernie Sanders was able to win him over because Bernie Sanders has a history of saying the same thing over and over again. But Joe Biden can't win him, him over. Why? Well, it's because of mental fitness, because Joe Biden is obviously in cognitive decline. Now, I think that Donald Trump is an idiot, and he's also in cognitive decline. But Democrats managed to find the one person who voters would see is uh, maybe less competent and prop him up all election and tell us that, you know, this is the most electable person and you have to vote for him. You have to vote for him uh, if you want to be Donald Trump. And now that voters aren't necessarily falling for that, at least what we can tell based on this clip, uh, now they're blaming everyone but themselves, which is really, uh, which is interesting. Now, I'm not go going to go through all of the outrage, but I'll just share one tweet from a Democratic Party loyalist that I think really encapsulates the uh, broader uh, sense of outrage we got from the Democratic Party establishment. Bakari Sellers tweeted out, Joe Rogan was a great endorsement. I don't understand why we get trounced with black voters. So this is supposed to show how clueless the progressive left is because they're unable to perform with uh, black voters, at least in South Carolina, even though most black voters haven't voted yet. But I'll admit, Bernie Sanders should have theoretically done better. Um, and I don't necessarily know why he didn't do better. We'll have to do an autopsy once this is all over and figure out what he could have done better because clearly he didn't do enough because he didn't win over uh, black voters, disproportionately older black voters, even though he won over younger black voters. But the point is that we don't know what he did wrong specifically, but Bakari Sellers is saying, well, it's because of people like this propping up Joe Rogan 
is part of the reason why, uh, you know, he wasn't able to convince black voters. Except if you're going to base it off of who you're associated with, why would Joe Biden, a former segregationist who has been accused, credibly so, of rape, why is he who propped up Michael Bloomberg, who's a current racist, why, like, why is that not an issue for the Democratic Party establishment? Bernie Sanders sharing the endorsement, the pseudo endorsement of Joe Rogan is a bigger issue to the Democratic Party's team than uh, Joe Biden sharing Mike Bloomberg's endorsement and complimenting Mike Bloomberg, who is, I think, a much more egregious figure than Joe, uh, Joe Rogan, right? By their own standards. But yet, do you understand that this double standard is never brought up? It's because there's a separate set of standards that apply to us that they don't hold themselves to. If I were a Democratic Party operative, I would be watching clips like this. I'd be trying to soak up all of this commentary and figure out how we can help Joe Biden beat Donald Trump. Because, I mean, what they're trying to do is, you know, put his wife front and center during live streams in order to hide his cognitive decline, which is obvious. But voters, they, look, they, they want good policies, but they're not as ideological as everyone else. You know, they voted based on electability. But a lot of people who are like Joe Rogan, who will be voting in 2020, making this binary choice between Joe Biden and Donald Trump, they're going to base, you know, their decision on things like uh, leader leadership, you know, more abstract qualities like who's mentally fit, you know, things that are difficult to gauge. Uh, now, mental fitness is certainly something that you can gauge, but given the choice between Donald Trump and Joe Biden, I think they're both not capable of being leaders now, but voters are going to making the going to be making these types of evaluations. So rather than lambasting any and everyone who, you know, supported Bernie Sanders and, you know, rather than attacking Joe Rogan, understand that he's not the problem currently. He's not the enemy. It's not Bernie Sanders who's the enemy. So they're going to try to scapegoat Bernie Sanders and his supporters once Joe Biden uh, fails to win them over, if he fails to win them over and loses. But you've got to understand, the writing has been on the wall. Now, this COVID-19 global pandemic has changed a lot, right? We don't necessarily know what's going to happen once this uh, pandemic comes and goes, and then we move on to a global recession. We don't know what's going to happen. Anything can still happen. I'm not going to say that Joe Biden is definitely going to lose, but just judging the low level of enthusiasm, given how Democrats are already having wandering eyes and Cuomo sexual is trending on Twitter. I mean, you're just you're in for a rude awakening come November. So people in the Democratic Party, if they actually care about beating Donald Trump, which they should, they need to be looking at these types of analyses, looking at what people are saying about Joe Biden. And very clearly, there's a lot of issues. So. I don't know if he's going to be able to overcome that, but if he's not, then just understand that this is the bed that you made, and now you have to lie in it. The Democratic Party establishment, namely Obama, moved heaven and earth to make sure that Joe Biden became the nominee, and everyone dropped out and coalesced behind Joe Biden. This was after Bernie Sanders had a blowout in Nevada, but the establishment made everything change in a matter of, what, seven to nine days? This was unprecedented. So they wanted to make this happen and they did. They're going to get what they want. So now they have to live with the consequences of choosing someone who is completely incompetent. And not only that, he doesn't bring forward any real policy solutions. So, you know, aside from the fact that he's not going to energize the left, you know, centrist, more moderate types of people like Joe Rogan, they're going to see Joe Biden when they're making this choice between Donald Trump and Joe Biden. And they're going to realize, you know, um, if I'm having to choose between this individual who's clearly in cognitive decline and someone who's already president, I'm going to go with what I know. It's not just Joe Rogan who's going to be making this decision. And the tragedy is that it really would be a disaster if Donald Trump did get another four years, because that means four years of the prospect of war with Iran, right? Four more years of worrying about 
who else he can fill, you know, if another Supreme Court seat becomes vacant. But this is what Democrats did. And the problem is that the disaster that they have, you know, brought upon themselves, it's not them who's going to be suffering from that. It's going to be normal people who bear the brunt of this, of their incompetence. So, I mean, it's just frustrating. They never learn. They never are willing to be introspective, even for a second. It's always blame, 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 play the blame, blame game. And when you're done with that, play a little bit longer. But it's just... They'll never learn. And um, in four more years, if you think that them losing to Trump again, if that's what happens, is going to give them a sudden change of heart, it's not. They will never change. They have to be forced out of power. That's the only way we will be able to get change. Mike is a total loser. So don't hit the subscribe button, okay? And whatever you do, folks, do not hit the notification bell either. Mike treats me so unfairly.